now let's talk about uh, the topology and capacity of, of these neural networks. So if we go back to the XR problem, I think this is the third time we are sh showing this in, in the course. So you basically know that the XR problem is a basic instance of nonlinearly separable data. So we see that, uh, yeah, with four instances, no linear model is able to process it. Now let's use a, a simple neural network, multi-layer network to process that. And this one can do this, in fact. We have two layers. So we have this layer of, uh, of with two neurons and that layer with one neuron as output. And you can see here that we have some weights that are corresponding to to the configuration of each neurons uh, at the input layer and some other weights for the neuron at, at the output. And we are using step functions. And so with this setting, with these weights, we are able to classify uh, properly this uh, these, uh, data from the XR problem. So, uh, no, this is one topology to solve that problem, but there are many topologies, many configurations of neural networks that can be used to solve the XR problem or any other problems. And as such, given the topology, we have different decision boundaries that are possible. Uh, we usually say that with one hidden layer, we are able to process non-linearly separable data in terms of classification, but we will be able to uh, learn only convex boundaries. So uh, we are relatively limited by the type of uh, decision frontiers that we can learn from neural networks with one hidden layer. If we go with two or more hidden layers, then we are able to build up concave boundaries. So, so then we say that the neural network is an universal approximator. That means that in theory, we are able to model any kind of data with a neural network of two or more hidden layers, given that we put enough neurons on each layer to model the, the data set according to the complexity. Of course, if we have to build up very fancy decision frontiers to achieve a, a zero error uh, in terms of classification on the training set, we, we may need a lot of neurons. And, and, and there is no guarantees that we will be able to optimize for that uh, solution, but we know that uh, it is possible to approximate everything with uh, a two or more hidden layers neural network. And as such, the number of weights, which is basically a function of the number of neurons, uh, directly determines the complexity of the classifier. So uh, with more neurons, with more weights, we have a more complex model that has the potential of, of learning more fancy uh, decision frontiers to be able to fit over more complex data sets. And as such, there are no uh, exact uh, ways of determining the right topology. It's more a matter of trial and error. So we need to try, we need to, to experiment with different topologies to figure out the, the one that is quite fit, quite good to deal with a given data set. And there's, there are no universal topologies. There are no topologies that is working that are working well for all kinds of problems. So I uh, was talking about convex and concave decision boundaries. Uh, just an example here that when we have only one hidden layer with one output layer, so basically a two layer neural network, one hidden layer neural network, we are able to learn this kind of boundaries on the top. So it's, they are either the convex open or the convex closed. So these are possible. But you can see here that if you look at the, 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 the second derivative of that function, we always have a second derivative that is uh, either all positive or all negative. The sign is not, is not changing. So uh, this is somehow characterizing the convex uh, functions. Uh, when we are talking about concave decision boundaries, this is more what we have on the, on the, at the bottom of the of the figure here. So we have this kind of S shape. So you know, you know this is going in one way and then the other way here, or this thing you know, with a concave portion of that space. So learning this kind of decision frontiers require two or more hidden layers in our neural network. 
So if we look, for example, at this problem, you know, we have a set of points here that are clearly nonlinearly separable. And it is in fact quite complex. And we, we are dealing with, with this with a, a neural network of one hidden layer with two neurons on that hidden layer. And we are not able to deal with that. You know, if we are generating some space, it may look like the, the, the space of Y1, Y2, which is the output of the hidden layer, which is given as input for the output layer, we have something like this. And, and, and then if we need to do linear separation of this space with the last layer, we can do something like that, but uh, you know, we are still making some mistakes, you know, that, that sample is misclassified here. So we are not able to achieve uh, an optimal uh, with zero uh, error, so 100% accuracy with that topology. But now if we are increasing the size, so we still uh, keep it with one hidden layer, but we are increasing from two to three uh, neurons, then we are making a different transformation of that space. And that, that refers somehow to what we see before on radial basis function. Uh, so kernel method uh, versus linear discriminant. So here we are making a mapping from that 2D space that is giving us input into a 3D space that is the output of the three uh, neurons on the hidden layer that is represented by that. And what we can see is that that space here has this kind of projection. And you know, with one R per plane that is determined by the last neuron, we are able to make a perfect separation of this data. So we are able to learn some kind of mapping that is giving us 0% of error, you know, all samples are correctly classified with all the red circles on the bottom of uh, the hyperplane and all the blue squares on the top. Likewise, if we are looking at regression uh, with uh, these points, you know, with one neuron, we are roughly approximating that, but that's not super good in terms of error. Uh, so this thing here, if we are looking at nine neurons, we have a perfect fit, you know, we are able to, to get uh, the, the approximation curve to be exactly on spot on all the nine samples, uh, the eight samples, sorry. So, uh, but maybe there are even probably some overfit with the version at nine neurons. So it seems that maybe in between the, the one with three neurons is making a good approximation and might be able to generalize better than the version with nine neurons because it doesn't, it is not overfitting, even though, you know, it is relatively well modeling the data, probably slightly better than the one with one neuron, even though we need to, to know the real phenomenon to figure out what, what is the, the most generalizing version. 